What's up guys, Baker here. Today I am back with a super, very exciting tutorial. Today I'm going to call it uh, the 3D Vertigo Effect, mainly because I don't know what to call this. But, you may have seen this back in my uh, Community Montage V2, and it's basically this effect after he jumps off the roof. Let's check it out real quick. So you see how the buildings and the whole scene kind of stretches. And uh, even though this is kind of old, uh, almost three years old, it's actually not the first time I used this. Back in my uh, stamina editing contest entry back in 2012, so four years ago, I uh, kind of made the same similar effect. Let's check it out real quick. So if you saw that, closely you can kind of see the buildings kind of shift and distort and I don't know I call it some kind of 3D vertigo effects I think it's kind of cool one of my favorite old school effects that I never really showed anyone but yeah might as well teach it and uh, maybe you can learn something new so let's go ahead and jump right in so first let's say you're inside your main comp here and you got a clip over here and then you got another cool clip and you want to you know use this effect when he jumps off now this effect won't work for every single type of clip so you kinda have to mess around with a few examples to kinda get used to you know what'll work what'll not work I have not tried this with live action footage but I can imagine it looking uh, pretty neat now you don't want to use this on a moving clip you're gonna see in a few minutes that I'm gonna use a freeze frame so if you were to use live action footage you might need to shoot this on a tripod and just kinda of keep things still but anyways let's go ahead and check it out first thing you wanna do is go inside your clip make sure it's pre-composed uh, pre-composing is a good practice to have regardless so um, go inside here and we see our clip it's uh, 720 by 1280 right now what we're gonna do is go into the composition settings and we're just going to lock the aspect ratio and multiply this by 1.5 just to kinda of stretch out the composition here okay leave it as it is and just apply a motion tile effect and we're going to output this 150 because we did 1.5 right and mirror the edges and boom looks a little weird but that's okay if we check out our main comp it'll look exactly the same that's just because our composition is still 1280 by 720 it's just the clip itself is overlapping and extending a little bit further so what we're gonna do is go to the exact frame where we want this effect to start and I'm just gonna zoom in here and go forward a few frames until he kinda jumps off and is you know relatively a still place so what you want to do is split the clip, Command Shift D, or go to Edit, uh, Split Layer. And then we want to freeze our frame right here, but first I want to go and split the clip again where you want the effect to end. So if this was a live action footage, maybe you just want to move forward one frame, and then just freeze frame the one frame in between, but I'm actually going to go ahead a few more frames until he shoots the gun. So it kind of just depends where you're your clip is but yeah I'm gonna do that spot right there let's go back here to right when this starts right click time freeze frame alright so now we got uh, he's running and it freezes in the air and boom so you can uh, if you have a song you can go ahead and line this up right to your beat and you can extend this to wherever you need to and maybe your clip is gonna be that long cool right there so that looks good for now what we're going to do first is we need to decide how many pieces we're going to have for this 3D effect. So I'm looking at my scene here. I see I want the gun to be separated, so that's one. These rocks on the left, that's going to be two. Uh, this building on the left, three. Let's do the crane is four. Let's do this building on the right is five. Maybe these rocks and this tank together as uh, six and everything else in the background that'll be seven so I need seven copies of this frozen layer so I got one two three four five six seven and let's rename these so we can kind of you know organize this a little better 
So I'm gonna do background, and then let's kind of work our way, you know, um, from back to front in terms of what's close to the camera. So next is gonna be, uh, I don't know, right side rocks and tank. And then let's do the crane in the middle. Maybe left building, and then left rocks, and then right building, and the gun right in front. All right, so now we need to kind of separate all these layers. So first one I'm gonna do, pretty simple. I'm going to uh, take my pen tool on the gun layer, uh, hit tell the key to full screen this guy, and just go ahead and pen tool out the uh, the gun. So I'll see you guys in a few seconds. I'm gonna fast forward this so we don't spend too much time. All right, so if I saw the layer, you can see I have the gun all by itself. I just did a quick job. Uh, if you want to spend more time, be more detailed and precise, go ahead. But uh, this is going to be kind of a quick effect, so um, yeah. So put in the effort of uh, how much you want to get back with this effect. So next, I'm going to take this right building. Just go ahead, again, take your pen tool and um, mask everything out. One thing I want to mention real quick is um, even though the gun is covering up where the crane is, um, I kind of masked where I kind of think, you know, maybe the crane building might be just because um, I don't want to mask out just what's showing because uh, I'll show you in a second how to kind of deal with that, but you want to have a mask for the entire object where you think it might be. So let's go ahead and continue. So this is kind of a quick and dirty job, but um, yeah, that's pretty much what I got so far. So let me kind of set up the basis of this effect, and then I'll get into the finer details of how we kind of clean this up and make this look a little bit better. But pretty much overall, we have all these separate layers. We're going to go ahead and make a new null object and apply a slider control. If you want to rename this null object, we're going to call this, um, I don't know, 3D Vertigo controller, something like that. And let's push E for effect and open up the slider control so we can pick whip to this slider. And we're going to use some expressions. Uh, let's go to the gun and push P for position and alt click the stopwatch for position brings up our expression box so what we want to do is use this slider up here to control the Z position of the 3D layer oh forgot to mention we need to let's close out of that take all your uh, frozen layers here that are all masked out and stuff except for the background backgrounds not masked take all these and go to your 3D layer switch and boom they're all 3D that's step one Step two is then I'll click your position stopwatch, go into the uh, expressions, and let's type value, which just takes whatever we have right now, 64360, zero. And we're going to add, and then you want to do bracket, zero, comma, zero, so that's x and y, comma. And then for the z, we're going to pick whip to this slider right here. And then we need to complete it by doing an end bracket. There. Click away, and it should. Be okay. Now, if you mess with this slider, you should see the uh, Z position update automatically. So, if we take a look at our screen here and play with this Z value, we should see our layer kind of float in 3D space, which is pretty cool. So, we're going to do that for every layer, and the way we're going to make this kind of uh, automated and 3D push them back in different positions is we're gonna add a little modifier to this expression right before that pick whip you're gonna type in a number so I'm gonna do negative 10 and then times that number so what that'll do is when this uh, slider increases it brings it closer to the camera like that so I'm gonna take this expression copy all of it command C and we're gonna close the gun and we're gonna go to the right side building 
push P and alt click and paste command V now instead of negative 10 which brings it closer to the camera I'm gonna do positive 10 how about that that'll push it away from the camera I don't know if you can see it yeah it's because we have a couple 3d layers so how about this I'll do the background first that'll help P alt click paste and I want this to go really far back so maybe I'll do uh, let's do 30 for now and we'll do the right rocks over here and the tank now I don't want this to go as far as the background so maybe I'll do how about 20 or 25 not negative let's do 25 and the crane that's a little bit in front of this tank in these rocks so maybe not as much so maybe that'll be a 20 instead of a 25 left building uh, left rocks let's do left rocks first and let's make that I don't know 10 and the building is a little bit behind the rock so maybe we'll do that one as uh, 15 or 20 we'll do it's kinda in line with the crane so what was the crane 20 I think yeah so let's mess around with the slider real quick and check it out ready reset it at zero and let's let's uh, bring this down a little bit and go it's like the matrix look at that wow 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 see that's why we use the motion tile because the background is gonna get smaller and we need to have it tiled in order to uh, kinda see more stuff now we're getting a lot of weird duplication issues like this gun here these rocks the building looks weird it's upside down you got the crane and stuff but we're gonna fix that in one second so once we have everything kind of set up for right now let's set this back down to zero temporarily and let's uh, let's check it out so the first thing I want to open up is the background so make sure you're at full resolution right click and open layer so this will let you edit just that layer without opening up the uh, pre-comp or anything like that so we got this layer we're gonna go up here to our clone stamp tool many people don't know this but After Effects is basically like Photoshop on steroids it's Photoshop for videos basically so it's got a lot of the same tools not all of them but a lot so we can open up our clone stamp tool make sure you're on the very first frame of that frozen layer your duration is constant uh, let's go opacity to 100% and let's check out a brush size maybe I don't know 50 make sure it's not hard so it's kinda of feathered and let's just kinda of clean this up a little bit so what you want to do is anything that was masked out so like uh, the building and the crane and the tank back there or whatever you want to get rid of that because this is the background this is just like blank uh, blank background basically so I'm going to hit alt to sample an area over here and just start painting over here so if you've ever used Photoshop this uh, is pretty much a must know type of tool so hopefully many of you are already familiar with uh, this tool now I'm gonna go through this pretty fast you're gonna see that it's gonna be a very very rough job so I'm not gonna spend a whole bunch of of time on this so I will see you guys in a couple seconds and um, yeah alright alright so that's pretty much my quick and dirty job here um, you don't have to get rid of everything as you'll see in a bit because we'll have other layers on top of this but you just wanna try to you know get rid of most of the stuff that might be duplicated when you um, offset these 3D layers so let's go ahead and close out this tab here come back to our main composition let's just do a quick uh, check and when we extend this we don't see a duplicated crane up here we don't see a duplicated building and um, you know looks pretty cool so let's go ahead and continue right on um, the gun by itself no problems looks good to me uh, right side building so if we take a look at this if we offset this it's kinda you know cut off right here 
so what we can do is just right click and um, open layer again and just go in here and again take a clone stamp tool and just kind of I don't know extend it the best you can and just you know keep painting out here and you know maybe take this roof and extend it this way a little bit and just sort of start painting it's okay if you got some uh, replications this is going to be a quick effect so uh, hopefully your viewers won't notice any imperfections you just want to kind of make this you know a little fast a little maybe a little blurry to hide your mistakes but you know whatever just a little something just to fill in the gaps you know so let's close out of that go back to main over here let's unsolo the right building and um, what else we got so let's minimize this left rocks so if I solo the left rocks and I take a look at this let's right click open layer again I do have a little bit of the gun shown right here, so I'm just going to quickly cover that up. Just a little something like that, something easy. And um, we got this double bar down here, so maybe if you need to, just, you know, get rid of it. What you also may want to do is um, close it first, push M for your mask, and just, you know, extend out your mask a little bit more so you have more uh, data to work with I guess so if we open this back up open layer we have more stuff we can uh, clone stamp and kind of get rid of and clean this up real quick again spend more time on it but uh, for the sake of this tutorial eh, it's close enough right yeah okay that looks amazing perfect a couple more examples if I take my left building over here I can kind of play with the mask because remember this was motion tiled so this almost looks like it's part of the uh, the building over here so again real quick go ahead and open layer and I probably want to get rid of this uh, double what is this the UAV or whatever the mini map so just kind of you know paint over it close enough am I right yeah alright so let's also uh, paint down here a little bit more to extend kinda where the building is just so we don't have any empty gaps because uh, you know this masked part of the building is going to be you know the same mask as the rocks in front so we want to try to add as much data as possible so that looks okay for now. Let's go ahead and close that and just uh, see how we're doing. Taking a look at the crane real quick. Let's open this one up. We do have a lot of the gun kind of in the way. So again, just do your best and try to get rid of anything that's been masked on a different layer. So uh, like these rocks and this gun, right? We don't want that. So maybe let's decrease our brush size a little bit. And I'm just gonna take uh, maybe this part of this building and try to try my best to maybe just extend this window, pretend like it's a long window. Just paint out this building, you know. So this is really where your artistic Photoshop skills needs to come into play. So if you've never used Photoshop, uh, you might be out of luck because this kind of takes a while to, you know, kind of paint your own picture. I don't know. Close enough. Uh, like I kind of said before, you know, put in the effort of how detailed you want to go. Um, you know, maybe uh, you need a different clip that has less detail in it, but, uh, you know, video games do have a lot of stuff going on sometimes. So that's going to be the basics for that. Um, I guess we have one more layer. Okay, let me do this real quick and uh, we'll finish this up in just a second
All right, whatever. That's close enough. Just want to try to extend it a little bit this way and a little bit this way. So, all right. So let's check out where we stand right now. Let's uh, unsolo everything, and here we are. So what we're gonna do is go to that first frame, go to our Vertigo controller, hit the stopwatch. Let's uh, move forward to the end uh, right there where he shoots and hit zero again. And kind of go to the middle, maybe a little bit past the middle. And let's just bring this up a bit. Check that out. So you may need to increase your motion tile a little bit or just keep your value enough where it uh, fills the entire screen. So are these, uh, these weren't even zero. So let's make that zero and keyframes zero. Let's go ahead and open up the graph editor and just maybe, I don't know, smooth this out a little bit. So it kind of bounces in and then comes back a little, a little fast or something. I don't know. And um, let's check it out real quick. Let's do a quick RAM preview. Dang, look at that. I'm actually, you know what, I'm not going to lie. I'm actually kind of surprised at this. Look at this. I mean, you can see some... Uh, little differences from this original frame to the next frame but check it out I mean you don't see any if you look at the the buildings over here and then like the crane and the tank and stuff you don't really see any duplication problems that much I mean you don't see any part of the gun anymore remember that was all over the crane it's kinda hidden by this it's like I feel like this is the matrix look at that vertigo effect and so you can add extra things so maybe like another thing I did was uh, I added some rotation so if we push R for rotation and go to the Z rotation I can hit uh, stopwatch and maybe do this uh, slider again I don't know times let's say 0.5 and then the building could be let's do rotation and let's uh, pick whip again and do I don't know times one and I can keep going with this but it'll rotate see how it's down here it's a little yeah it's a little too extreme but you can have things rotate and come back in like it's a total totally new scene and that's exactly what I did back over here if you watch very carefully there is a tiny bit of rotation so I think that's pretty cool Maybe another thing you can do, let me get rid of this uh, rotation real quick. Maybe uh, you can make an adjustment layer and maybe throw on some, I don't know, optics compensation. I like this effect because uh, when, let's say, it comes over here and I keyframe this and I think we need to reverse it. Let's go kind of towards the end of the effect and just bring this in. So it's almost going to be like it shoots out and it distorts and brings it back in maybe if I move this keyframe that way a little bit so it's distorting and it's like what and then it's just a nice I think it's a nice impact build up kind of shot so you know running in and wow I, I don't know why I'm going back to the matrix but this is just pretty neat so one more thing I just thought of that uh, maybe you guys can implement. Uh, let's make a new camera real quick. And um, I don't know what uh, millimeters you want, but go ahead and choose that. And let's just see what happens when, see how, uh, see the camera is going to mess up your distance kind of a little bit. So just make sure you adjust your slider until everything fits again. But I was thinking, Maybe we can go into the camera, push AA. Let's also zoom in a little bit. And let's turn on depth of field. Let's see how that kind of looks. So maybe if I increase the aperture 50 pixels, maybe let's do 100 pixels. I think we need to mess around with our focus distance, maybe blur level, maybe make this extreme just for this case real quick. And let's see if we can focus on something check that out now we got kinda some layers in focus and some not in focus let's try to do a quick RAM preview and just see how that kinda looks 
Not gonna lie, that looks pretty cool. Maybe increase the blur a little bit, but you kind of get the idea. I think it just adds a little bit more depth, and um, I don't know. That's just something I never used before, but that's pretty neat. And um, yeah, all right. Let's do a real a uh, little recap. I took all the pieces of this clip and uh, masked them out into their own separate layers. Now anything that overlaps, like the gun showed up on the crane, I need to use the clone stamp tool to completely isolate each element in this scene. Then I used an expression to offset these layers in 3D space and only used, what, three keyframes for this entire effect? <sighs> Boom. Yeah, and that's pretty much it, and you get this little nice parallax effect and um, I don't know I just think it's pretty neat one of my favorite effects uh, I really hope you guys enjoyed this video um, do me a favor and like this video and if you have an ad block on please I should ask this in the beginning please disable it and maybe refresh the video these ad views really help support me I'm trying to pay off my student loans you know just teaching After Effects for free so uh, you know it would really help me out if you could do that and maybe like and share and favorite and subscribe if you're not subscribed hit me up on Facebook and Twitter if you got any comments or questions and whatnot um, I really really do like this effect so I hope you guys learn something new and you know try it out mess around maybe use uh, live action footage and make some new effects and stuff so all right, that's pretty much it. I'm going to stop talking now. All right, peace.